Yeah, we back boyos and girlos. So, uh, yeah, so this is what we're doing today. We're going to be in actual hell. Congratulations to ourselves. So, uh, yeah, this is part one. I don't know how fast we'll get through it, but I'll try. So, yeah, this is something I really don't want to do. Like, bro, all the videos I do, I do because I want to. But this, I do not want to do. But I gotta do it for the sake of the timeline. But what is there to say, bro? Everything has already been said. Everyone has come together and usually agreed this was probably not the best thing to put out in the 2000s. And even if you don't agree, this, is, this is, isn't as bad as people say. You have to agree the later movies are better. Like, bruh. Like, the shorter movies blow this out of the water, respectfully. But yeah, uh, two parts. This is the first half of the movie. Next part, my final half, plus my thoughts. Because I feel like this movie angers me, but, like, I have to explain why it angers me. Because it's a, it's a special type of anger. Yeah, I'm somehow I'm still sick. Like, my voice is so shot, even though I don't, I barely have any sniffles. Like, this is so weird. Yeah, I'm recording this, like, around in May, so, like, whatever. Humans are more relevant. Uh, so, yeah, it opens with Alec Baldwin, rest guy, uh, funny lion. You guys know all the memes, right? I'm just gonna call him Alec, Alec Baldwin, because, like, literally, that's what everyone does. Alec Baldwin, lion, like, bro, it's, it's easy, okay? It's easy, it's easy. He introduces Thomas, the hero of the story, and, uh, press X to doubt? Uh, I think that might be a lie. <coughs> <coughs> Bro. Yeah, we're introduced to Sodor, and yeah, first, this scene was the goofy scene. We're going to catch up Thomas and 4K for being late. And the funny thing about Gordon always saying 1, 2, 3 was the only thing I can remember about the movie, honestly. Like, this was a, this was a very suspicious review, man. Anyway, it's no crone, so I'll give him a pass. All and just go is only good because of him. If you watch other dub without him in it, it's trash. Don't do it. Just go online and try and find the dub. Also, Sir Tom had is a way which explain why this whole movie happens because this is what happens when you don't let Sir Tom Hat do his job. That's all I'm gonna say. Deal ten spawns to scare the crap out of Gordon. And this is why the movie is first bad. Everyone acts like they know each other while we don't know them at all. This is how you know it won't be good. And I always had the Shining Time, and yeah, I know there's a show, but I haven't seen it, because, like, it's kind of hard to find online. Like, all the footage is hella grainy, so, like, respectfully, bruh. Yeah, like, dude. The fact that Sodor is an alternate universe could have worked if explored deeper. Like, that that's something that I feel like gets overthrown a bit, like... And Alec Baldwin claims we can help him. Like, sir, I am just a child. You are a small little man. Like, this is from the perspective I was a kid watching this movie. Like, fam, what can I do? Respectfully, what can I do? Then we see James fighting a fly. Because he was locked up in Sir Topham's man's basement again, for some reason. For being naughty. And, um, Diesel 10 is here. And after Diesel 10 turns a bit up lady, Thomas gets mad even though we don't know her. Sir, why should we be... <laughs> So, this is the problem when you write movies introducing new characters. You have to explain a reason why we have to defend them. And this is going to be part of a bigger video essay where I'm going to compare Thomas the Magic Road and Hero the Rails because they were my two childhood Thomas movies. And I feel like Hero the Rails kind of basically fixes a lot of the problems from this movie. Like, I feel like Hero the Rails is like the, the counter argument to this movie. Like, but that's neither here nor there. And yeah, we're back to the human world, now it's a real life train. And that's actually pretty cool, I like that. And on the map, there's shadow railroad lines, which implies that Sodor, there's Sodor lines, and yeah. And we hear a depressed old man named Burnett Stone, the guy who has the thing for Lady. And yeah, by the way, Lady is Sodor's god, we have god in this universe. Which makes sense because there's Christmas trees, but like, I didn't expect that type of god. We see Shining Time Station, where we see the art that Burnett Stone made, and yeah. We see Burnett Stone just depressed with Lady, like holy shoot. But ironically, that would probably make for a pretty good prequel, but whatever. Uh, well, whatever. We, that's neither here nor there. Oh, there's a kid here named Patrick. Yeah, I'm sorry. Names are kind of trash in this movie, not gonna lie. Yeah, it turns out Diesel 10 beat the crap out of Lady and Burnett Stone because. I don't know. And also, how is he still alive if he committed a crime as egregious, respectfully? Bruh. Yeah, we see. 
Diesel 10 committing va- vandalism, casual Tuesday for bro, and we meet Diesel 10's henchman, Slar and Dodge, and Diesel 10 tells him the plan. Kill Lady and all the students go bye-bye. Bagwan's like, bro, stop, please. And all Bagwan's how many times this theme. And why does this movie have so much info dumping? Show not tell, right? Yeah, I think that's probably why this movie did not work. Because if you're a little kid, you're just here for some reaction, bro. Just let the trains do whatever they want. And then you hear all this info dumping, you're like, sir, this is not class. Yeah, Alec Baldwin proceeds to talk to a fish. Literally, me for real. And Alec Baldwin used to burn it stone art from earlier. Yeah, it turns out it's Sodor. And Alec Baldwin reveals only gold dust can take time to Sodor since the absence of the lady. And it turns out that there's an overpowered dog. And the spark of glitch- dust is glitching, and now we're finding Sodor. Yeah. Steamies are here. And. Thomas finds Alec Baldwin, and he snitches on Diesel 10. Even though I feel like Diesel 10 is kind of like a gotcha card, but whatever. And Brimstone just keeps having World War II flashbacks. And it turns out Brimstone has a daughter named Lily, who's coming over to our world. And yeah, it turns out Brimstone's wife died. And after a touching when we cut to the scene, Vengeance is actually doing their stuff. Like, bruh. James is still beefing, and Gordon actually agrees, which, bruh. And after it seemed to be debate where Alec Baldwin made Dean Diesel 10, Batter and Dodge made a trap card, and they sent sneezing power by Harold to some Diesel 10 meddling. So Tom Hats a letter to Alec Baldwin reads, and he proceeds to work for Tom Hats hats. And you can see the engine's pictures on the wall. Like, this is not, this is like a bruh movie, bro. And yeah, the painting changed, and also the phone is hella loud. Let's invite Alec Baldwin comes from a line of conductors, which, good, which, I kind of wish they expand on this lore, bro. I'm going to get into it later, but I feel like this movie has a lot of potential in the lore department. They just, they're, they're just trash it, not going to lie. Yeah, Alec Baldwin's out of the lead, lead though. It's thinking. Alec Baldwin's talking to his bomb about the Diesel 10 doesn't sleep in time. Alec Baldwin, the whole steam team is scared. But Alec Baldwin's like, the Diesel 10 for the team to the sugar. And yeah, Sparkle is gradually getting worse. And this is getting also a year recent for it. Alec Baldwin just has to kind of get back. I like 
Okay, we're back. So I will talk about the movie, and I'll give my thoughts on the movie in the form of questions. Let's get started. Also, I took some medicine, so hopefully I don't sound that bad. Depression. Yeah, that's basically what I said earlier. Even more pain. So yeah, Bertie calls Thomas out for not having his coal truck, and first he's like, I I the answer. I just had a brain blast. But first he has to activate his deputation powers again because Thomas leaves him to fight two diesels. Like, bro, why? Thomas needs to find Alec Baldwin, but Diesel 10 finds him first. Then Diesel 10 picks up Alec Baldwin, tells him what he knows, and for some reason Alec Baldwin can see the future. And Alec Baldwin pawns to some clippers, and yes, I know this thing would work IRL, and he gets Diesel to the windmill. Convenient. He finds a brick wall with words on it somehow, and spot on and dodge, throws Diesel 10. Then Diesel 10 is covered in coal. The strike team watches in 4K. Billy is hanging out with the boy from earlier, Patches or something, or Patch. The bird starts just watching, he's like, bruh. Billy and Patch head to Shining Time Station, and they ride a horse together, and they follow the mysterious railroad tracks. Birdstone is still hella depressed. And Lily sees Junior again. Junior talks about t- talking trains, and Junior takes Lily, even though they are limited in gold, gold dust, and she takes them for her grandpa. And the magic railroad, railroad lol, she even said the name, bruh. And they see the cold truck, and yeah, Lily is stuck in the solo, and and for some reason, Junior is allergic grass born to conduct your family, and Lily gets to see the magical world. And yeah, it should have been me. Like, that's like one of the only good things about this movie, is like, you wish, you kind of wish you were in this situation, ironically. Like, if you know the lore, you wish you could have been, that could be you. And Thomas sees Junior, and it turns out he has beef with Junior, because Junior is a bit of a troll. Which respectfully, Thomas, wouldn't you a troll yourself? Why are you mad, bro? Why are you mad? And Andy and Claire Ball abandoned, and they reunite Alex Baldwin role. So, the Magic Railroad. Alec Baldwin has a brain fart. For some reason, this universe flowers or phones. Like, this still doesn't make sense, but okay. Junior grabs a phone and trolls her top of hat, and Junior gets catch caught in the windmill, and he gets used to Diesel 10, he knows him. Thomas says the eventually line. And yeah, basically, at back at training time, everyone's freaking out because they don't know where Lily went. First, he's on his quest, and he's far and dodge, and the tumbleweed can speak. This is never explained. It is never brought up. They left in the squatter chilling. Alec Baldwin posts a theory about Lady and Burnett Stone. Lily tells Alec Baldwin Burnett Stone's train, and now Patrick Burnett Stone with Lady. And this is where they talk about the railroad and they need Lady, so Tom needs to take Lily through the magic railroad, and the Tumbleweed can- continues to speak for some reason. They go to the tunnel. The second half is just pure weirdness, and none of this makes sense. But it- this was an official movie, guys. This got greenlit. They find a coal truck, and Lily makes a connection, because they need to take it to, like, fix Lily, because it's so little coal. And Thomas gets called really useful, because this is a Thomas movie, guys. But if you think about it, how many times have I really mentioned Thomas, have I? Think about it. Just think about that. I'm not going to count, but, like, think about it. And, yeah, they make a muffled mountain, and Thomas falls to his death, but somehow he somehow survives that. And Patch takes Lily, and Thomas gets yeeted. And Lily info dumps all over and so just having a panic attack in the background. Yeah, so ladies return. Lily makes the connection, gets patched to get the coal, and Junior runs to James at the Diesel Wars with Diesel 10, and Junior uses his dust when now they're broke on gold dust, and Lily starts asking her grandpa a bunch of questions about her grandma and Lady, and they give Lady the coal, which brings her back, so uh, we're about to fight for this. Let's go. Let's just go to this, please. Chapter 5, then. Somehow, he's still alive, despite death. That makes no sense, he should have died, but, uh, this is a kid, but we can't really do that, can we? We need Alex Baldwin's squad again. Oh, yeah, that dumb gold dust. Needle 10 is backed by Thomas and Lady, and Clown Dodge is like, yeet, this is by even though they shouldn't have been here in the first place. Those two are high in gold dust. Needle 10 thinks it's cool to fight two tank engines. Oh, yeah, and the divine duck is whack, so Needle 10 falls to his death. And after he murdered Diesel 10, we get to the well scene, and all the other scene I remember growing up. So for some reason, Sodor just has a well full of gold dust. Which makes no sense, but okay. Junior gives Lily back her gold dust, and now Junior wants to stay on the Sodor. For some reason, even though, like, he wants to actually work, even though he didn't really want to work before. And all the passes the torch and the fire thing again, and so Tom is finally coming back to Sodor. And this is, keep in mind, this movie was so ass. That it was never mentioned again in the lore, bruh. Like, think about it. The only time Lady ever appears again is, like, in one other movie. 
Like, everyone universally agreed this was so bad that they got cut, cut out of the canon. Like, this, this this movie has, like, no future ramifications, which is kind of sad, because this is a movie with a lot of good ramifications, but, like, interesting ramifications because of the human mix, but, like, yeah. It was so bad that they all usually agreed to shut the hell up about this, and I don't think the writers ever wrote this shit again. But, yeah. Yeah, now everyone... Al Bone leaves and Lily gives the ground for the gold dust and the bird had relevance from earlier. And yeah, now we're back in Chinatown and that's the end. Like, this movie is so weird, bro. This movie is so weird. So I'm asking three questions, but yeah. And this is all y'all avoiding me after I ask you questions. First question. Is Thomas and Friends a glorified... Is Thomas and Magic Railroad a glorified fan fiction? Well, that would be an insult to actual fan fiction writers, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Like, literally. Tumblr has way better stuff. Yeah, this is an actual insult. I'm very sorry. But I have to pose a question to catch your eye. Because, like, if I said something else, like a blank statement, like how it's a fan fiction, like, people wouldn't care. The reason why I said this is because I know some people actually like this movie. And, like, my personal headcan, why people like this movie is because it shows enough world building with not enough complete answers, so people have to theorize and make their own. Kind of like a glorified fan fiction in a way, like, entering random crazy stuff in it. And yeah, it is kind of interesting in that regard. But on the other hand, people dislike this movie. Personally, there's better Thomas and Friends movies out there. This is even the best Thomas movie. This is not the best Thomas movie of this decade. Here at Rolls, he's better here at Rolls. Peter Blazing is real. Uh, but yeah, that, we're not getting to that later. But yeah, this movie has fan fiction elements, and let me explain. There's a self insert. Ladies' favorite Brit Alcroft. Ladies, the god of solo, Brit Alcroft is the one who pioneered this show. Moving on. And next, there's literally a magic system with potential that isn't fully there. And also a random character insults character inserts with their own lore. Like, that, that's how it works. And yeah, Thomas and Squad just know about these ten ladies. Anyway, my rounds have the way now. It's probably deeper stuff we looked into it, but, like, that's the base, base weird. I'm not going to analyze this movie because it hurts my head. It's a world-building interesting. Uh, this is why this movie makes me mad! Because I do actually believe this movie has potential. I'm not meeting you. Uh, like, I like the world building. The fact that Solo just catches has a four chain time stage is really to our world. Like, bro, it opens the door to, like, different AUs and stuff. And, yeah, the world building presented better. This is what it slapped hard. I find it interesting that we can just casually travel between two universes. Like, bro, that's crazy. It's writing okay. Uh... So when it comes to the writing, I know there's originally different plots to this movie. Like, there's some, instead of, like, an angry Dino, they're supposed to fight some angry old man who didn't believe in magic. For some reason, the, the test audience were more scared of an old man than a freaking train. But whatever. A diesel or whatever. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. I'll just be looking at what was presented today, because they're two different stories, fam. I have a problem describing this movie, because it's it feels like a... It just feels like a nothing brother, bro. It feels to use too much telling rather than shows. Like, okay, I know Thomas Burns has narrators, but go watch Hero of the Rails. That has, like, less narration. That's, like, more cohesive. And they just that character to show. Well, this one just inserts a narrator every five seconds. Yeah, anyways, like, if you want to know my issues with the movie, just watch Hero of the Rails and, and compare those two. That's been, that's a future video of mine. Go watch Hero of the Rails. Do it for the Hero Glazing. And, yeah, it's not no earn in other movies, and I don't really see it. So, yeah. Yeah, everyone drop your opinions down below. Let's be civil, because I know Thomas can be decisive when it comes to his movies. Like, people either love or hate Thomas movies. Like, no one has a clear, like, hero list, bro. It's so decisive. It's all we chill at the end of the day. We can all like whatever we want. See you all next time in peace. And by the way, this is the Earth before and after your opinion. So, like, your opinion respectfully doesn't really matter. This doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. See ya.